Does this 12-year-old point-and-shoot take unlimited film-like photos? No! Why would you think that? Today, we're going to be talking about this Digicam. Uh, and I would still call this a Digicam, although it's late in the Digicam era. This is the Samsung EX2F from 2012. It's a high-end point-and-shoot um, with a 12-megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor. Uh, it's a 1 over 1 7th inch sensor, like a lot of other brands' point-and-shoots from the time. For example, uh, the GX10 or Panasonic LX5, Olympus XZ1, etc. Uh, this one stood out from the crowd, though, because it has an f1.4 lens. It's not going to change your life. But it's a fun camera. I'm going to do this one a little different than I do most of my videos. This is going to be a five things I like, five things I don't like format. And that's just because I see this more as a fun camera than a serious use camera. And I'll try not to focus too much on specs and performance. It is a 12 year old camera after all. So what are a few things I like about the EX2F and a few things I don't? To start with, thing number one is the lens. This is a 24 to 80 millimeter lens and it's f 1.4 to f 2.7. That's right, it's an f 1.4 zoom lens, which is crazy fast. Obviously, it's only that fast at the widest setting, but still, that is a very fast lens. At the time, it may have been the fastest lens you could get on a point and shoot. These days, I think there's a more modern Panasonic camera, the LX10, uh, that has a similar f1.4 to 2.8 zoom, but that one has a larger, more modern uh, one inch sensor. Okay, number two. Another thing I like about this camera is the body. Uh, despite it being a little point and shoot that easily fits in a jacket pocket, it has a very good build quality. Uh, it's an all metal chassis. It's white, I kind of like that. Uh, everything about it feels very solid. Um, this thing's built like a tank, and it's got a lot of controls. Um, it has a front control dial and a ring on the back dial here, uh, as well as a dedicated wheel for drive mode, which I don't super love, but whatever. The third thing that I think really stands out with this camera is the flip out OLED screen. Uh, despite being so old, this is one of the brightest screens I've ever seen on a camera, and it's super convenient and nice to use. It actually still feels pretty modern, even in 2024, although it has that subtle OLED glow um, that's a little bit greenish when you look at it off-axis, just like an old Samsung smartphone. But overall, you know, the screen tilts and articulates every which way, um, and it's super bright and it's easy to compose with. It's really quite good for such an old camera. Pro number four, the built-in ND filter. Having an ND is super useful and it helps you shoot wide open in bright sunlight and is also useful for flash. Getting to the ND filter is a little bit fiddly in the menus. I wish it was something you could set to a custom button, but it's great to have. And finally, pro number five, I would say it's the image quality that's still good enough for social media and online use today. I shot a number of tests and at 4K resolution and below, it's very hard to tell the difference between this and my larger sensor cameras without pixel peeping.
Okay, what are some of the things I don't like about the camera? Well, one of those things would be the sensor size and the resolution. It's a 12 megapixel camera, and I'm okay with 12 megapixels on the right camera, but the sensor on this guy is one over one seventh inch. Uh, and that was standard for high-end point and shoots back in the day, but it's been largely superseded by one inch sensors like in the RX100 or the Nikon J. Um, one inch sensors tend to be higher resolution and they have better image quality. A second thing I don't like about this camera is the unfortunate Wi-Fi functionality. Whenever you're going to take a photo and you hit the wrong part of the camera with the back of your hand or your thumb, um, all of a sudden it goes into Wi-Fi connection mode, which was probably a feature they were really excited about back in 2012. It stops the camera from taking pictures and you have to wait about 10 seconds while it tries to connect to a network and fails and you have to cancel out of it. It totally disrupts your workflow and unfortunately, it's very easy to press and it seems to be impossible to disable. Another thing that's bad is the incredibly tiny battery and the short battery life. My camera came with three batteries and that's probably the amount that you need if you're gonna go out for a day of shooting. It really burns through the batteries quickly. And then con number four would be the video quality. With this flip out screen format, it seems like it would be an amazing little vlogging camera. But of course, you have to remember, this predates the era of vlogging cameras by a number of years, and the video quality is pretty poor. It's actually one of the worst I've tested. Um, All right, and those were my thoughts on the Samsung EX2F. These cameras are pretty hard to find now and maybe even always were, at least in North America. I remember it being announced back in the day, but it's not something I ever remember seeing uh, in stores. So it's a bit of a rare one, but you know, it's still a fun, enjoyable camera. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. Um, I'll talk to you all next time. And as always, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Bye.